Nada Hashmi is Director of Middle East Studies at the University of Denver. He joins us now live uh, via Skype from Denver. Good to have you with us again, sir. So 11 groups now forming an alliance uh, in order to cobble together some form of, uh, of government. Uh, this is a recipe for disaster, isn't it? Well, actually, I have the exact opposite view. Um, this is a coalition government that is uh, the most inclusive and, I would say, representative Iraqi government since the 2003 American invasion. It includes um, both um, Iraqi Shia, Sunni, and members of um, various religious minorities. Um, and what's positive about that development is um, it marks a transition from previous Iraqi governments that were very sectarian-based. Um, most of the key players have a nationalist political agenda that is geared toward developing Iraq uh, for all Iraqi citizens, not catering to the uh, ethnic or sectarian interests of one p p uh, particular group. So in that sense, there's a lot to be optimistic about. Whether they can address the immense uh, political, social, economic and environmental challenges that Iraqi society is facing remains to be seen. You, you talk about the immense challenges. Just, just uh, how uh, difficult uh, will it be uh, to, to, to govern Iraq? What, what are I mean, uh, the, the, the stakes? How high are the stakes here? Well, the stakes are, uh, are, are huge. You know, Iraq is a failed state. It's um, been deeply affected by a, a sectarian war, um, by the rise of ISIS, which has been, uh, you know, crushed, but not comprehensively, I think, defeated. Um, and some of the you know, key challenges um, um, that Iraqis are facing are the normal things that developing societies um, struggle with, unemployment, corruption, uh, the delivering of public services. Uh, in southern Iraq, for several months now, there have been ongoing protests over the question of access to clean drinking water. You know, tens of thousands of Iraqis have uh, checked themselves into hospitals over um, water poisoning, um, and there has been no one that has been um, able to really, you know, stand up and address, you know, these issues. The hope is that this new, you know, Iraqi coalition government, being much more inclusive and representative, um, will begin to address these challenges. Whether they'll be effective in addressing these uh, these problems as I said a moment ago, really remains to be seen. So there, there are huge in, internal challenges that are also uh, pressures from outside Iraq, uh, the country caught as it is between increasing tension between the US and Iran. How, how will that play into, into this new government? Yeah, it's a major, I think, um, um, destabilizing element in the sense that Iraq is um, a very weak uh, country, a weak state. Um, it's allied both with the United States, but also um, it has deep links with um, its its neighbor, the Islamic Republic of Iran. And both the United States and um, Iran have been asserting themselves in these coalition talks to try and advance their own interests and assure and and and, and, and in, in the hope of um, making sure that their favorite candidates or coalition um, members um, comprise this new Iraqi government. But I think that the bigger concern is that we have a new um, um, U.S. foreign policy toward Iran under Donald Trump, which seeks to play hardball with the Islamic Republic of Iran. And sadly, Iraq is caught in the middle of uh, these two countries. And it adds an element of instability that other, I think, developing societies, emerging democracies don't have to face. And it's a real cause for concern. Always good to talk to you, sir. Many thanks indeed. Nada Hashimi there uh, via Skype from Denver.